Hi friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today we're going to do a big old fashion empties video. I've got a very, very heavy bag of empty cosmetics products. I'm going to review them for you guys. Sit back, grab a snack, grab a drink. I got a beautiful bubble tea surprise for my husband. So let's get started. Before we actually get started, I want to tell you about a product that I used up the entire sample. Um, so I'm going to put a picture of it here. It is the, I actually don't know the name of it, but it is one of the really, really fancy soaps from Clé de Haute Beauté. You might know about this brand because I have talked incessantly about their really, really fancy $130 foundation, which I love. It's like basically a holy grail foundation, but this is an expensive brand, okay? So I got a sample of their Synactive soap. It is supposedly like a world-changing soap. It's $100. I was like, how could a soap be worth $100 if it's just a facial bar of soap? Um, and the lady was like, you know what? I can just give you a sample of it and you can see for yourself why it's so good. And I used it up and I kid you not, I think that in conjunction with one other product cleared my skin up. Um, Am I going to be a simp for Clé de Peau skincare? Maybe. <laughs> it's very, very, very expensive. It's $100 for like a big chunk of bar soap. But then again, I think about it and the value might be there because it doesn't have any water to weigh it down. And if we think about buying like two bottles of like Biosense cleanser, um, that's probably going to be the better half of $100. So if there's any world in which it is justified to buy a luxury facial cleanser. And part of it is like, is it worth it? But part of it is also the experience. I just felt like the Synactive soap was so much more like above and beyond my expectation of what I thought it was going to be. Truly, it broke down all of my makeup, all of my eye makeup, waterproof makeup, um, left my skin feeling incredibly clean. Like it was comparable, if not more clean than an oil cleansing routine, which you guys know, like my congestion around the pores, typically my biggest problem area because I, I get texture around here, right? Because I'm oily skinned, um, I have these sebaceous filaments, everything like around here gets a little bit bumpy. And even if there's no pimples there, there's a little bit of texture that no amount of smoothing, putty, primer, silk canvas, nothing will get rid of it because they're protrusions. This soap literally removed all of the oil plugs, all of the sebaceous filaments, like literally anything that was sitting in my skin, clogging my skin, making my skin kind of bumpy or textured or uneven. I think... I can attest to that cleanser being the reason why my skin's cleared up. It's insane. So I have to start with that. Obviously, I haven't repurchased the item yet because it's a very, very hefty price tag. Um, and I still have some second cleanses left, so I'm not really permitted to buy it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to tell you about this inactive soap first. Next, I've got my Vanilla Co. Clean It Zero Facial Cleanser. This is the oil cleansing balm. It comes in a really convenient jar like this. I have a bone to pick about the packaging like you can see just how much plastic is around the edge and um the inside is kind of like floating this kind of a double wall situation i don't mind this product i just think it's a little bit overpriced for what it is i think it is comparable to like a a drugstore <laughs> cleanser i think maybe at the time that this was invented it was a skincare revolution um this and the Hamish cleansing balm, like those are the two big names in the K-beauty sphere. And you know, K-beauty and skincare is light years ahead of American skincare. But you know, at, the, at this time, at this juncture, there's so many oil cleansers out there on the market that I actually don't think this is worth repurchasing. I picked this up at Ulta because it was a name that I recognized and it was a product that was easily accessible. But um, would I buy this again? No, absolutely not. All right, let us dig into this delicious bag. Oh, two more things. Two of the facial soaps from Lush that are the naked bars, so the bars that are, you know, without packaging, without anything. Um, I have thoughts. First one is that, like, oil, um, that oily, milky oatmeal one. Loved that one. I think it's cowlin-based, or it might be some other kind of clay-based with colloidal oatmeal. Love that one. I think it's really good, very gentle. Um, I don't think it cleans the skin quite as well as the Synactive soap, but I do think that it is, you know, it has this really nice herbaceous quality when you put it on the skin you lather it around and you remove it it has this like slick herbal feeling that really does feel quite spa like but i wouldn't purchase it it's only 15 dollars though so eh, give and take i do think that you need a lot of rinsing to get that stuff off so take with that what you will and the um the other one i don't remember it's got like some kind of like herbal tea or something in it i did not like that one and i didn't purchase these soaps i got samples of them because i was looking at second cleanses so verdict is i wouldn't buy either of them but yeah i did try those all right let's get into the actual products i have my totally Rain double repair facial moisturizer from la roche posay this is not the actual container because 
I like to keep these packaging things first so I can give you my initial impressions. I really like this moisturizer. This is, I think, the second moisturizer that I've come across that I really enjoy layering on my face at night. Um, from the drugstore at least. The first one was the Cactus Cream from Letter Jo. This is the second one. I'm very particular about the texture of my lotions at night and I don't know if it's because I'm aged now and my skin needs more moisture um, but when I was a teenager there was no way you were getting anything that wasn't a water cream on my skin um, but now I enjoy it and this one is really good because it's very very gentle, dermatologically tested, doesn't burn my face, <laughs> doesn't disrupt my skin barrier and I like it. It's very good. I think I'm actually almost halfway through this, even though I just purchased it in January. Next, I'm reaching in here. Ah, the Naturium Vitamin C Serum. Okay, this is something that I have complicated feelings about. On the one hand, this is a brand that Susan Yara was disingenuous about when she did her whole video promoting this brand as if it was something that came her way and she like happenstance like came upon it and you know, she wanted to share it with us and turns out it was, you know, this very misleading form of advertising. I was furious. I voiced my concerns with um, the way that she was conducting her business, but at the end of the day, it comes down to what is accessible. I really, really don't like placing orders for items online. I just find the whole process to be frustrating to me. Um, so if there's something that I'm missing, I would really, really much prefer to get it in person. And I really didn't want to buy a high-end vitamin C serum because it's something that you're using all the time. The one from La Roche-Posay, which is the brand that I committed myself to skincare-wise, their product is twice the price of this, and I don't think it's much more like effective. So I bought this. It was $20 at Target, and I really, really like it so far. Um, and I think it is a, a good product. And I think, you know, I 100% trust the science behind Susan's brand. I don't think she's doing anything to fool us or trick us. I just think that the marketing was disingenuous. Um, and it was totally illegal via, you know, if we're talking about FTC guidelines and stuff like that. So I am personally a little bit torn. But at the same time, there are people who make mistakes. And when you voice your concerns and there is a certain level of accountability um, from there, do we just like burn them at the stake, cancel them? Are we talking about cancel culture? I just figure that for my own life, this served me more than I was willing to boycott them. You know, like I, I wasn't willing to put my money behind a vitamin C serum that was easy for me to access, but I didn't know much about, or I didn't think there would be, you know, an elegant formula, or I wasn't able to test it. So at the end of the day, this was mostly a selfish purchase, but you know, it, it was just, it brought to mind an interesting um, convergence of ideals, like whether we want to like do the right thing, even if it's less convenient for us and just to like be on a, a high pedestal because at the end of the day, like she's already at Target and me saying I don't want this um, and then getting something else in lieu of it could hurt me more than it hurts her, you know? Um, so that's just to say that I purchased this product despite it being advertised kind of in a slimy way and I really like it. <laughs> Susan, you did a good job. All right, let's talk about some other products. Oh, my Too Faced Born This Way foundation. I finally used this product up. I think it's at least three years old, which is crazy because this has been going for a while. I mean, I didn't have it in a project pan for any length of time, so I guess I kind of rotated in and out. Um, really good middle of the road foundation. I think it reminds me a lot of the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear foundation. Color is also almost identical, so the match has been really good. Um, just a medium foundation. It's a little bit thicker than this one, uh, but but good. It's good. I wouldn't buy it again because <laughs> it's kind of boring to me. Like, there's nothing radical about this product, and I think makeup has to be radicalized in some way, shape, or form if you are such a beauty junkie, you know? So that's one product. Next, we've got the Shea Moisture Manuka Honey and Mafura Oil Intensive Hydration Hair Mask. Mine is missing a lid because I'm disgusting. I liked this mask. It was pretty good. As you can see, I've cleared the whole lot out. Um, and since I finished this, I haven't purchased a new hair mask because as you guys can see, a lot of my hair is new growth. Like up until here, it's all new growth. And virgin Asian hair is like notoriously strong, um, just naturally. So I just haven't felt a need to upkeep my hair that well. And I've been washing it like two to three times more per week than I usually do because so much of my um, hair is now new growth and it gets oily very quickly. So I probably should put a little bit of, you know, a deep conditioner on the ends, but I can't be bothered to spend on a hair mask because my hair is just going to grow and I'm going to cut off these dead parts anyway. So it's just another expense that I have cut out. So happy with that. But if you are looking for a hair mask at the drugstore, definitely, definitely recommend Shea Moisture. Of course, you have to consider your hair type and texture and um, what it needs. But I had very, very, very chemically processed and damaged hair that was high porosity. So having this product really did help. All right, let's take a look at what else I have. Oh, I have a <laughs> very rancid couple of perfumes. These are the um, Sonia Kashuk perfumes. These are beautiful, beautiful products. I don't think she makes these anymore, but I collected these like through high school. And when I say collect, I don't mean like I hoarded them all. Like I literally went through them 
like bought them, went through them, bought the other ones. So I've got two here. This is the Yellow Alurania and Pink Innocencia. Both are delicious floral scents. They've gone off, um, but you know, there's some decent use, like this one especially, good, good products. I mean, 100 mils of perfume is going to last anyone a good amount of time. I mean, especially because these products, if I recall, were like 20 bucks each and I purchased them back in high school and I'm, you know, well into my working adult years now. So yeah, it was time for them to go. They changed color. They don't really smell the way that they should. And I've really been enjoying my dossier collection right now. So yeah, happy to kind of transition those out of my life. I don't necessarily regret that at all. Next, we've got the Body Mary Retinol Surge Moisturizer. If you are a viewer from Hannah Louise Poston's channel, you will recognize this product. She, um, I think, like maybe of the first or second year that she was on YouTube, she recommended this as a retinol moisturizer. And so this was my first foray into retinol ever. Um, and I liked it. I don't think it really did resurface my skin much with the retinol inside, but the vitamin A was nice, the green tea and vitamin E, all that stuff with the moisturizer. It felt nice. It was a really kind of pleasant product. I liked the airless pump, um, which is a new jelly. Do you mind? Can you go out the other way? I like the airless pump because I feel like a lot of, um, shall we say, more affordable skincare brands don't have that kind of thoughtful packaging. So really convenient. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I probably won't buy it again because I have a dappling as like a a particular treatment. And so I, I like the, the way I'm doing it now, which is treatment separate from moisturizer. All right, we've got the Sun Bum SPF. This is the facial sunscreen. I like this stuff, but it has um, a couple of UV filters that I'm trying not to use anymore. So I probably would not repurchase this. If I were in a hypothetical pinch, like I was on vacation and I forgot my sunscreen and, you know, we're out in Disney and I really need to have like a really strong SPF on my face, I would do this one because it does work into the skin into an invisible layer, but I believe it has some filters that are not so good anymore. So we don't purchase this any longer. Next, I've got a Trader Joe's peppermint toothpaste. <laughs> Me and toothpaste, right? Um, I like this one. It was just very clay-like. I think the ingredient must have been, like the biggest ingredient must have been Sorry, my cats were like trying to communicate with each other through the wall. Um, yeah, this toothpaste is fine. I usually pick this up because I'm like kind of on the edge of needing a toothpaste and we're grocery shopping and I'm like, oh yeah, toothpaste. But I never actively enjoy this product, so maybe we should call it quits with this relationship. Next, what do we have? I have the, oh, Chanel Le Beige. Okay, this is a product that is like absolutely iconic at Chanel. It's called the Chanel Le Beige um, Water Tint. It is a... Uh, how do I say this? It's like a water serum that has these little spheres of pigment that are suspended within and when you buff it onto the skin the pigment particles burst and you can use it as a really really light face base, you can use it as a touch-up product, you can use it as a primer, you can use it as you know whatever you want. Um, and I got some of these you know these little tiny sample blister packs from the Chanel booth that I was shopping at and I don't get the hype. I mean I put it on half my face and I asked my husband if he noticed a difference and he immediately pointed out the side that had the fresh water base on it. Listen, he's a bougie bitch. I don't know how he knows this stuff, but he does. He has like a really keen eye for makeup. But personally, I would not have spent $70 on this water fresh tint. Um, I'm potentially just too poor to see the value of this product, but I just think if you're going to get a tint, you might as well just mix your foundation with a moisturizer, right? Isn't that going to be the same thing? Uh, but maybe that's just me being ignorant. However, I do love the tiny little brush it comes with. I've been using it actually to apply concealer because it is just a tiny, tiny, tiny little pinpointed brush that's very, very dense. It's like the world's smallest kabuki brush and it has a little Chanel insignia on the bottom. So it's very, very precious and I definitely think the sample was worth it to keep that tiny brush. All right, next we've got a R&Co Death Valley Dry Shampoo. This is a very small, I think I must have gotten it as a perk from Sephora or something like that. I think that this is just fine. I think for dry shampoo, there's really just two criteria. One is that it effectively removes the look and kind of weight of oil on your hair. And two is that it doesn't leave any residue on the scalp. Uh, and so I think if you can find one at the drugstore that does an equally effective job, there's no reason to be buying high-end you know, dry shampoo. Granted, you could say the same thing about any functional beauty product, like foundation is just used to cover your face, so why get a nice one? So, I mean, I understand that that opinion is very subjective, so I likely will not be purchasing this again. Also, I just haven't been in the habit of using dry shampoo. Like, I don't have any dry shampoo in my closet right now, um, so if I, if I did need to go out and buy one, I probably would buy Batiste. <laughs> I'm just that kind of person. All right, yet another toothpaste. This is the Native Fluoride Anti-Cavity Toothpaste. 
in the charcoal edition. I think I was just here talking about how much I hate charcoal toothpastes a month ago and here we have another one. I told you guys about the fact that we just have toothpaste in this house. We go through it very quickly. Not that interesting. Uh, next product is my Soda Pore Cleansing Mineral Rich Cleansing Oil. Okay, so this is an interesting product. I picked this one up at Bed Bath & Beyond for I think like 4 or $5, which is really, really nice. Um, this cleansing oil, when I first used it, my skin reacted very, very well. Like, you know, that thing on TikTok where they do oil pulling and they just like go and go and go and all the plugs come out of the skin. I wonder if my skin gets used to oil cleansers and then kind of the effect wears off quickly because when I first got this product, it was like, unclogging central like literally anything that was stuck in my pores flew out of my face I could see like bits of solid gunk in my fingertips but then as I hit the halfway point and got further down it felt like it lost some of its efficacy in cleansing the skin so I don't know if that's a this product or if it's a me product or if it's something about the way that I changed my skincare or my makeup routine but I have to say I won't buy this again I think when it comes to oil cleansers and your experience with cleansing and second cleansing and your skincare routine like that is a step that you don't want to be Kind of messing up with i think second cleanses i'm more lenient on those because you know you already cleanse your skin but the oil cleanser for me it really has to do the heavy lifting to remove all the grime all the filth of my everyday life all the impurities and especially that heavy heavy layer of makeup that i'm wearing because i am a slut for good makeup and you know when it's come time to come take it off i need it to get rid of all of this stuff that's been congested including the oils including all the buildup and so i just i don't mess around too much with oil cleansers i think they're fun to try but you know at the end of the day if it doesn't knock my socks off i'm not going to repurchase so that's two oil cleansers that we already tried that i will likely not come back to yet another one of the perfumes from Sonia Cash like this is purple seduction I like this one as well but yeah they're all expired and I don't think she makes them anymore next we've got a pair of Ardell naked lashes in 424 clearly I don't have them here but uh in one of my last videos I mentioned that I purchased some Ardell lashes the nakeds are my favorite I was turned onto them from Morgan Turner she is gorgeous and she always has impeccable taste in all things makeup but specifically I think some of her lash tastes are incredible so um, when I heard her talking about the naked lashes I was like oh my god gotta try them and since I did last year I've literally never gone back Ardell nakeds are some of my favorites all of them are insanely beautiful so I don't think I have a, a favorite like a diehard favorite but yeah that one definitely got five or six uses and tapped out next we've got the elf camo concealer this is the regular non-hydrating version and you can see that it's been nice and used up this is in the color light sand and it definitely is a highlighting shade on me i find concealer colors to be so whack <laughs> like it's so hard to tell what color you are because in the tube it kind of looks like it could be the right color for me like you know just as a regular under eye concealer but i put this on and it's like stark white on my skin i've definitely used it on camera before so you'll see uh and i i definitely use it up i don't necessarily throw it out because it's not the right fit for me but it does feel like to use this product i have to have a full face of makeup on like it has to have contour or bronzer or some sort to like really balance out all the different colors because otherwise i just look absolutely crazy um but i do like the camel concealer would i repurchase probably not i think since i've tried the hydrating concealer i'm not going back to the regular camo next we've got a couple of samples i guess Ooh, this is the biosance squalane and peptide eye gel so i tried a couple of do i have another one yeah i've got two maybe i've got a couple oh yeah the, and the gel moisturizer i've got a couple of samples from biosance a long 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 time ago uh i mean i guess maybe it was in the beginning of the year because i did an empties video this year but this video this product very 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 good I actually considered using Biosance as my main skincare brand for this year because I tried these two samples and I was so blown away with the efficacy of their product. The moisturizer was rich, it was hydrating, it was delicious, it soaked right into my skin but it didn't make my skin feel greasy. It didn't leave my skin with that I can't turn around on the pillowcase feeling because if there's anything that I hate it is the feeling of like grease soaking into my silk pillowcase and like touching it again later is like so disgusting um, and the eye cream with the peptides also really really nice and hydrating I just thoroughly enjoyed the experience of using those products but then I went to Sephora and I tried to buy them and I was like these are really expensive products though and they don't really feel luxurious enough to be worth the price I don't know I'm still kind of on the fence I mean I don't have any skincare things that I have to purchase you know in the near future so I'm not really up against the wall of having to make the choice but if the opportunity presented itself I definitely see myself purchasing this Biosance line of product it, it is really really good 
Okay, so here we've got two Lash Princess mascaras. I used up both of these, I think, when my project pan thing went around and I enjoyed them. I love Essence Lash Princess. It's the only mascara I've used. I mean, I don't want to say it's the only mascara I've used, but it's the only regular mascara I've had in my rotation since I want to say like ninth grade. So it's been many, many a year that I've used these products. Personally, my favorite is the pink one, the volume version, but this year I was really kind of like on the, the green mascara train. I've since replaced these with one high-end mascara, but I think as soon as I'm done with the Charlotte Tilbury, I might go back to my tried and true. It is just a really nice product. It's really easy to work with. Doesn't flake, doesn't smudge. Uh, it's not tubing either. Tubing mascaras tend to be more expensive. Let me know if you guys know of a good one at the drugstore. Not the L'Oreal tubing one, because that one's actually not a good cost you know, value-wise. Um, but yeah, I, I do like these for a cheapo, you know, two for $10 situation. Can't beat these guys. All right, next we have the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. I'm surprised I didn't mention this in my last empties, but yeah, I finished this guy up. I like it. I have purchased this probably twice or three times already. Um, we go all the way back. BB Creams and I go all the way back to like sixth grade. So yeah, I've probably purchased many, 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 many versions of this. It's very gray and very neutral when you pump it out, so you might be terrified, but it definitely doesn't stay that way. And the product is super affordable. I think this is like $6 on Amazon, maybe $7, um, and it fluctuates, but if I were to pick this up again as like an easy summer product or a work product, probably better if you're not wearing a mask because it is quite hydrating. Um, but if you're just looking for like an easy product to wear, something that's fuss-free and you are my color or lighter, um, definitely try this one out. Very good evens the skin tone, very flattering. I think it definitely compares to some of the higher end BB creams out there. All right, and we just have two tiny little things left over. One is a little essential oil of the Lang Lang. I don't know if this is Ylang Ylang. <laughs> I'm inclined to believe it's Lang Lang. Lang Lang Lang? Yeah, I, I have to imagine the Y is silent um, or the L is silent and it's Yang Yang. I beast me, but I have one of these guys used up. We got um, a humidifier and it has a diffuse option. So yeah, this guy's used up. And I have a Solwasu Essential Balancing Water little treatment guy. I used this up because I had to. Um, it was going bad. I really, really don't like essences that have just like an open pump and they're serum-y in texture. It just makes no sense. If you're going to give me an open essence product, have it be watery, like a water filtrate, you know, like a like a, literally like a watery product. I don't know how else to put it. If, if I'm going to have to tap it out into my skin, I need it to be liquidy. Um, if it's a serum, I need it to be in a pump or a dropper. I just think that if you're going to charge luxury prices for skincare products, they have to be thoughtfully curated and designed. Um, and this was not. And I know for a fact that this is just a miniaturized version of the big one. Uh, and that's a very popular way that high-end products are sampled out. It's like a tiny version of the big one. You know, think about those Pat McGrath lipsticks or the SK2 treatment essence. They're all like tiny versions of the big thing. And I think <laughs> if this is an indicator of what the big thing is, I'm so like 100% turned off by this brand. In general, this is not a brand that I have my eye on. Um, even though I think it, it should be a really good one. Uh, there's something about, I don't know if it's a gimmick per se, but yeah, so most of it's not a brand that I am interested in. So somehow I procured this and used it up, but I'm definitely not going to be purchasing this balancing water, A, because the packaging is so atrocious to use. It's very, very difficult to get to the product. And B, because I, if I were to buy a luxury essence, it would probably be from Clay de Peau because I've sold my soul. I have sold my soul to that brand already. All right, everyone, that is everything, save for a Project Pan empty, but I'm gonna save that for later. Thank you so much for spending the time to go through my garbage with me. It's a relief to finally be able to empty this out and hang it up on my bathroom door again because that thing was seriously weighing down the doorknob so much. I love you guys. Oh, I had one last product that I wanted to share with you. This is a container of matcha that I got from a local tea shop. This was probably some of the best matcha that I've ever had. It's called the Izusu Green Tea Powder. Um, it's very hard to get your hands on the same matcha, like, you know, across the, the world or whatever. So I don't think I'll be able to share this with you. I just figure if you do see this at a specialty shop near you to definitely pick it up. It was not very expensive, but it had a very, very good blend of green teas inside. Um, and we love matcha in this household. We go through a lot of it. So that's everything, guys. Thank you so much for chilling with me, going through my garbage, all that good stuff. Let me know if there were any notable favorites or fails that you've gone through in your garbage or if you have a YouTube channel, do link you know it down below so I can check it out. If you have any suggestions for stuff that you want to see coming up, let me know. I'm so curious. And you know, with that, I think that's uh, all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I love you and I will see you very soon. Bye!